consciousness and energy matter is energy although it appears to be inert it appears to be not moving the wall that is in front of you it is moving at such a tremendous pace that you cannot capture the movement of the wall and it appears to you to be stationary when you look at the moving blades of your fan the blades are moving at such a tremendous speed that you do not see the blade so too the energy cannot be destroyed only form of energy changes from gross to subtle that which was gross becomes subtle and when it becomes subtle it becomes invisible to your eyes the blades of the fan are gross in their stationary state when they are moving at a constant speed the form changes from gross to subtle and you do not see the blades modern physics has discovered one of the greatest things ever and this is the contribution of albert einstein to humanity he said energy is equal to mc square mass mc square matter only appears and there is no such thing as matter nothing is solid even the solid rock is a pulsating energy even the solid rock is as much fluid as energy as the rolling ocean the waves that are arising in the solid rock cannot be seen with naked human eyes because they are very subtle the rock too is waving pulsating breathing and it is alive however the movement is so subtle that it mind cannot capture it fredrick nietzsche has declared that god is dead he is mistaken god is not dead on the contrary matter is dead matter is no more because now we know that matter is energy and only energy is and this energy of which the entire cosmos is composed of is consciousness and more precisely matter is not dead either something dies only if it exists as matter matter has been found not to exist at all its form changes this insight into matter brings modern physics very close to mysticism for the first time the scientists and the mystics are coming very close to one another mystics have always maintained that consciousness is man exists as consciousness man is nothing but ever expanding consciousness such is the understanding of sages and mystics sir author stanley addington a british astrophysics of the early 20th century discovered the addington limit the natural limit to the luminosity of the stars or the radiation generated by accretion into compact object is named in his honor as addington limit he is famous for his work regarding the theory of relativity which he explained to british audience the british speaking world he also conducted an expedition to observe the solar eclipse of 29th of may 1919 that provided one of the earliest confirmations of relativity and he became known for his popular expositions and interpretations of the theory of relativity of albert einstein as one of the greatest scientists of this age he said we used to think that matter is a thing now it is no more so matter is more like a thought than like a thing thought exists but it is invisible only with when it assumes a form a thought comes to your mind a thought comes to the mind of a planner of an designer when he makes the model of the design then people see it 
And when the model is converted into the actual reality, then everybody sees it. Entire existence is energy. Science has discovered that the observed is energy. The object is energy. At least for 5000 years it has been known that the other polarity, the subject, the observer of consciousness is energy. Indeed, consciousness is energy. Consciousness is fluid-like. That is why it goes on expanding. It is dynamic, constantly moving. Your body too is energy. Your mind too is energy. And your soul too is energy. Then what is the difference between these three, the body, mind and the soul? The difference is only of a different rhythm and different wavelength. Body is gross. Through body energy functions in a cross way and as a result it is visible. Remember, body is gross. Through gross body energy functions in a cross way. Through the gross it cannot function in any other way. And as a result matter is visible. The body is visible. Contrary to the body, mind is relatively more subtle. But still it is not too subtle. You can close your eyes and you can see the thoughts moving. Thoughts can be seen. They are not as visible as your body. Your body is visible to everybody else. Human body is publicly visible. Your thoughts are private and remain visible to you alone. Nobody else can see your thoughts. Only you can see them or people who have worked very deeply into seeing thoughts. But ordinarily, they are not visible to others. So thoughts are somewhat subtler. The mind is subtle. And the third, the ultimate layer inside you is that of consciousness. It is not even visible to you. It cannot be reduced to an object, instead it remains the subject. The subject, the seer that sees everything. The axle around which all the movement takes place, but people do not see the axle. When all these three layers of energy function in harmony with one another, you are healthy and whole. If these energies do not function in harmony and accord, you are ill, unhealthy. You are no more whole. And to be whole is to be holy. As a master, my effort is to discover ways to help you so that your body mind and consciousness all can dance in one rhythm in togetherness and in deep harmony not in any conflict instead in deep cooperation the moment your body mind and consciousness function together you have become the trinity and that experience is God there is no relationship between consciousness and energy Instead, consciousness is energy, the purest energy. Mind is not so pure and body is still less pure. Body is too much mixed and mind is also not totally pure. Consciousness is totally pure energy. And you can know this consciousness only if you make a cosmos out of the three and not a chaos. As such as you are, you are a chaos. The body, the mind and consciousness function in complete disharmony with one another and that is the state of chaos. That is the state of disequilibrium. And when the three begins to function in harmony with one another, there is cosmos, there is harmony, there is oneness, there is bliss. People are living in chaos and inner conflict. Their bodies say one man wants to go in one direction. Minds are completely oblivious of the body. For centuries you have been taught that you are not the body. 
and body is your enemy. You are taught that you have to fight with it and destroy it because the body is sin. Such things are harmful and poisonous, but it has been propagated by the so-called religious preceptors. But these have been taught for so long that they have become part of your collective mind. Such conditioning is there and as a result, you do not experience your body in a rhythmic dance with consciousness that you are. I emphasize on dancing, music, song and celebration because it is only in dance that you feel that your body, your mind and you are functioning together as one synergistic harmony. This is what Sufi whirling is. Rumi danced for 36 hours. The body was whirling but he became aware of the unmoving or the subtle movement of the consciousness within. And in that state Rumi attained to enlightenment. And the joy is infinite when all these function together and the richness is created. Consciousness is the highest form of energy and when all these three energies function together, the fourth happens on its own. The fourth is always present when these three function together. When these function as an organic unity, the fourth is always there, is still invisible but functioning. The fourth dimension is nothing but the organic unity. In the East we have called that fourth simply the fourth of Turiya. Turiya is transcendence. The fourth is transcendence. You have transcended beyond the body, mind and energy. All, all the three have merged into one another. Then when the three merge into one another as cosmic oneness of harmony, that which happens is the transcendence. That which happens is called as Turiya, the fourth dimension. The three have names, the fourth is nameless. To know the fourth is to know God, is to know all that is. More precisely, God is when you are an organic or orgasmic unit. God is not when you are chaos, disunity or conflict. And this is what all your so-called man-made religions are, a chaos, disunity and conflict. How can they give you the glimpse of godliness? When you are a house divided against yourself, there is no God. When you are tremendously happy with yourself, happy as you are, blissful as you are, grateful as you are and all your energies are dancing together and you are an orchestra or synergism of all energies God is. You are an embodiment of godliness then. That feeling of total unity or synergistic harmony is God. God is not a person somewhere. Instead, God is the experience of the three falling in such unity that the fourth arises of its own accord. And the fourth is more than the aggregate of the parts. If you dissect a flower, you will find all the chemicals, the petals, the stem, the pollen and everything else. Maybe you can even separate the color and the fragrance too, but the flower will not be there. Remember the color, the petals and the fragrance is not the flower or its aliveness. Even the aggregate of all this is not flower. Flower is something more. That something more is expressed through the flower, color, beauty, fragrance and aliveness that surrounds the flower. The whole is more than the sum total of the parts. It expresses through parts, but it is more. To understand that it is more is to understand God. God is that more, that plus, which cannot be put into the words. It is not a question of theology. It cannot be decided by logical argumentation. You have to feel beauty 
music and dance and ultimately you have to feel the dance in your body, mind and the being, the soul. You have to learn how to play on all these three energies so that all become an orchestra that God is, that godliness surrounds. Not that you see God. There is nothing to be seen. God is the ultimate seer. This is witnessing. Learn to melt your body, mind, soul. Find out ways when you can function as unity. It functions many times to runners. You will think of running as a meditation, but runners sometimes have experienced the state of meditation. They are surprised because they were not looking for it. Who thinks that a runner is going to experience God? Certainly it has happened. And now running is becoming more and more a kind of meditation. I am making cooking a meditation too. When you are cooking, there are moments when you are lost in it so much that all chaos disappears from you. There is synergistic harmony. The harmony between body, mind and soul can happen in running can happen in any activity and that is what the experience I am giving you through cooking. You have never been a runner, a cook, enjoying running, enjoying cooking in early morning or any part of the day when the air is fresh and young. Enjoy running, enjoy cooking and doing anything that you do the whole world is awakening out of sleep. Enjoy running as your body begins to function beautifully. Amidst the fresh air and everything singing all around. Enjoy running when you are feeling so alive and pulsating with life force. Enjoy your cooking when the aroma fills the atmosphere. The sweet, the fragrant aroma fills the atmosphere and your entire being and you begin to flow with that aroma that surrounds you and the beauty that is to follow afterwards and a unique taste that will follow. A moment comes when the runner, the cook disappears. There is only running, there is only cooking. The body mind and the soul starts functioning in togetherness and suddenly an inner orgasm is released. Runners have sometimes come accidentally on the experience of the fourth dimension. Through any activity that you do, you can come to that experience of fourth dimension. This will happen only when you are engaged in that act without allowing the clattering of the mind to continue. When people go for walking, they continue to talk. When people come to the cooking classes and they, con they cook, I am taking them to another dimension, but they continue to remain in their clatter of the mind. The fourth dimension is missed. Also, they will miss it because they will think that it was just because of running that they enjoyed the moment. Maybe it was a beautiful day, the body was healthy and the world was beautiful and there was just a certain mood. They will not take note of it. However, if they take note of it, a runner can more easily come closer to meditation than anybody else. Cook can come simultaneously close to meditation than anybody else. Jogging too can be of immense help. So too swimming can be of immense help. All these things have to be transformed into meditation. Therefore, enter into any activity, running, swimming, jogging, painting, cooking, and this will Transform into meditation. Do not entertain the clatter of the mind. 
only this much for this morning take care